Tina Koto Kato, Kokun Toko Ikua, Kate Fadi Tauka, or Tago Ho Emahiana. Kia ora everyone, my name is Quinn. I work as a science communicator at Otago Museum. I hope everyone is being safe and well in their bubbles. Oh, bubble. It's a word I'm hearing a lot lately, and I swear I never used to hear it. I seem to have bubble on the brain. Uh, so much in fact that I'm actually going to make a nice bubbly, refreshing drink with a nice splash of science in there. And I'm going to take you guys along this journey with me. Today we're going to be making ginger beer. Before we get started, uh, you might not be able to see in this shot, but it's actually quite dark outside because making ginger beer is a real process and we have to start at night so we can have our bottle that we're going to be having our ginger beer in sterilized overnight. So let's get started and jump right into that. It's really important for us to sterilize our bottle so that we have a clean environment for fermentation to begin. First of all, you want to clean the bottle. I'm using dishwashing liquid and hot water here. A good shake up should do the trick, but if you have a fancy bottle scrubber like me, or any brush that can fit into your bottle, you can use that just to be extra clean. Once that's done, you want to fill the bottle with hot water and add around two tablespoons of vinegar, then leave to soak overnight. Also, the patting of the bottle here is not required, that's just me being affectionate. Okay, so now we've let our bottles sterilise overnight, so they're all nice and clean, and now we're going to be getting into the actual making of the ginger beer. So today we're going to be focusing on yeast. We've got a couple different types of yeast here. Uh, yeast are actually tiny single-celled microorganisms that belong to the fungus family. Although uh, they're quite different looking than their uh, sort of mushroom cousin sort of thing. As you can see, very, very grainy. So during the making of this drink, we're going to see the yeast undergo respiration, which is a process of creating energy in order to live. Uh, our cells do this. So um, our cells uh, take in oxygen and create carbon dioxide. Uh, this is what we call aerobic respiration, uh, and it's called aerobic because it uses oxygen. Uh, we actually uh, respire, respirate when we breathe, so we inhale oxygen and then we exhale carbon dioxide. Unlike us, yeast eats simple sugars through extracellular digestion, which releases enzymes that then break down the food around them. This chemical process releases carbon dioxide and ethanol which is why yeast has been used in baking bread and making wine for centuries. The awesome thing about this biological science is that you can see it happen at home and you have a delicious drink to enjoy at the end of it. So, with that being said, let's jump right into it and make us some ginger beer. Firstly, we're going to empty out our bottle of vinegar mix and give it a rinse. Then we want to fill the bottle with hot water. The best temperature for yeast to grow is around 35 degrees Celsius. Once that's done, Add a quarter cup of sugar, one to two tablespoons of ground ginger, and the juice of two lemons. If you're using bottled lemon juice like me, a good measure is that the juice of one lemon is just under a third of a cup. Lemon juice is important because it makes sure that our environment is a good pH level. Once that's done, give it a good shake so that the sugar is mostly dissolved. After that, add a quarter teaspoon of yeast and shake again to combine. Make sure that there is a small pocket of air where the pressure can build up. This is necessary for the carbonation process, which will give the ginger beer that familiar fizz. It's also important to note that there will be a very small amount of alcohol or ethanol produced, usually less than 0.5% in this experiment. For those who don't consume alcohol for cultural or religious reasons, this experiment may not be appropriate. Now you're going to want to leave your ginger beer in a nice warm place for around 24 hours before you check on it again. Alright, kia ora everyone. So it's day three. Uh, I've got my ginger beer here. So I've had it uh, fermenting in a warm place for around 24 hours. Um, the best news really is that this actually has been fermenting. You can tell because um, of that chemical reaction, how we're giving off CO2 and ethanol. What that means is that you can notice, you can keep going back to your bottle and things like that and checking how tight things are. So right now I'm squeezing on the bottle and I'm, not, I'm getting a lot of resistance here, which means that there's a lot of CO2 gas in there. So what you can do is you can leave the bottle kind of for that 24 hours and then once you get to this stage, you can check if you can make a dent in it and if you can't, you're all good. 
but I've been um, burping the bottle uh, over the 24 hours and burping is basically just making sure that you're releasing some gas every so often because you don't want it to build up too much pressure in case it explodes which is another reason why you shouldn't use glass bottles and why you should use plastic um, but yeah so I'm going to demonstrate that for you guys here because um, since it's been 24 hours I'm about to filter it out get all the sediment out things like that and then I can chuck it in the fridge and I can store it for up to about seven days which is really really good but if you just listen here, this should be loud enough because it's been really building up quite quickly, which is why I've been going back to check on it. Okay, so, right, I'm going to put the cap off and if you just hear it. Yeah, see, so that's a huge amount of, and you can see it all rising up as well and fizzing up there. And after I've done it, and yet you see, yeah, it's really building that carbon dioxide up quite quickly. Here we are at the end of it all. I've strained my drink it's here in my glass with some ice. I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along this journey with me. Um, I'd love to see you guys make your own ginger beer and it's actually really cool to kind of watch the process along as you go, especially like I said when you're burping it and things like that and you can see that it's actually carbonating and that process is happening like right in front of you, you know, the yeast eating up all those simple sugars and then creating those byproducts of carbon dioxide and ethanol, which is really, really sweet. Uh, with that being said, cheers. It is good. It's actually good. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Stay safe in your bubbles, with your bubbles. Take care.